this is going to be some lessons on cures for sexual sins. And this is for Christians, saved people who are struggling with sexual sins. Now, if you're not saved, the first step that you need to take is realizing your guilt of sin and getting saved, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and resurrected. That's the only way you're ever going to have any type of victory over sin is to get saved and to get close to the Lord. So this, these lessons are specifically to born-again believers. Now the first thing I want to talk about is let every man have his own wife. Maybe you're single and you're struggling with sexual sin. In 1 Corinthians 7, 1 through 2, it says, Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless, to avoid fornication. That's sex with somebody you're not married to. Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So Now I see some people won't see this as very romantic, but one of the primary reasons to get married is to avoid fornication. It, a single person struggling with sexual sin, if you're saved, you need to be seeking a godly woman. You need to be living godly, trying your best to live for God, and looking for a godly spouse. It says in 1 Corinthians 7, 8 through 9, I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Better to marry than to burn in your lust. You see, as a single man, if you aren't struggling with lust, or if you don't desire a wife, Paul encourages you to remain unmarried and focus on the Lord. Just stay single. Focus on the Lord. You're not struggling with sexual sin. You're not burning in your lust. But if you are burning in your lust, the first step in putting out the fire is seeking a godly wife. She needs to be a godly wife. If you're a woman, he needs to be a godly husband. Because if you marry a lost man, if you marry a lost woman, you're just putting yourself in another hard situation. You're going to be trading one problem for another. Marriage is the first key to containing your lust problem because then that appetite can be fulfilled in an unsinful way Hebrews 13 4 marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge you see the marriage bed is undefiled any sexual relationship with others is wrong and God takes it more serious than you realize. But marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. Now say that you are married. If you are married, you need to be making use of the marriage bed. That's a cure for sexual sin. You need to be using marriage for one of the primary things marriage is used for. And... If you're withholding that from your spouse, this is also wrong. Keeping one another from the privileges that goes along with marriage can cause your spouse to fall into great temptation from the devil. Just like it says in 1 Corinthians 7, 5, Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to prayer and fasting, to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not. For your incontinency. So. Withholding that. From each other. That's a sin as well. The first step. In getting rid of the lust problem. Seek a spouse. If you're not already married. If you are married. Then. Come together as husband and wife. As much as you can. That's a cure for sexual sin. Let every man have his own wife. Let every woman have her own husband. Get married. And if you are married, make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. Now, number two, 
looks can kill, look another way. Maybe you're struggling with sexual sin and you say it's because of everything that you see in the world. And it's true. You see everybody dressed today very immodestly. Basically wearing no clothes sometimes. Looks can kill. Just taking, having a look. Sometimes it starts with a look. Sometimes a look, it triggers it all for you. Looks can kill, look another way. In Matthew 5, 27 and 28, the Lord said, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So he said, you just look at her and lust. You committed adultery with her already in your heart. This guy told me the other day he had to get rid of his TikTok because it triggered him to watch pornography. You got to get rid of that. Looks can kill, so you look another way. If you've got this TikTok stuff, Facebook stuff, even YouTube even, if the stuff you see on there is triggering you to lust and then take it a step further and look at pornography, just get rid of it. Clear that stuff off of there. Looks can kill. Just one look can trigger you. So look another way. In Proverbs 6.23, it says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. To keep thee from the evil woman. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. That stuff you're seeing on there on, the, on TikTok, on social media. A woman dressed immodestly. Trying to make men lust. That is an evil woman. She may be a nice lady overall to people, but she is an evil woman. That's evil. To tempt men to lust. Or a man, even, that's doing it. So to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman, it says, Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. These women get on there and they're trying their best to get people to look at them, to get views. Whether it be for fame, attention, money, they're trying to get you to look at them. And it says, For by means of a horse woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread and she'll hunt for precious life. You see that? It's like she's hunting you, hunting you down. And that's your worst enemy. That's one of your worst enemies in this world is a woman that's trying to get you to lust after her, possibly commit adultery, lead you to committing some type of sexual sin, and break any type of fellowship you have with God. That is your enemy. You need to look another way because looks can kill. It says in Proverbs 6.27, Can a man take fire in his bosom? And his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? Just like you can't go on TikTok and see women dancing around half naked and not burn in your lust. Just like you can't go on a, a bed of coals and your feet not get burned. you just standing there. So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her, shall not be innocent. And what, it, what happens before you go into your neighbor's wife? You looked first. It starts with a look. It says, Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy a soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, and he, doeth it, he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy 
is the rage of a man. Therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. The adulteress, she hunts for precious life. The lady at work, that trying to get you to look at her, even though she's married, she's like a hunter hunting for precious life. Looks can kill. You need to look another way. You need to let every man have his own wife. Let every man have his own wife. Let every woman have her own husband. Leave the, the next thing. Leave the path of evil women. Now, maybe you're going to work every day and there's women dressed super immodestly. You have to see them. They're right there in the break room. They're right there as soon as you walk in. You just got to look straight ahead. Leave the Just leave the path of evil women. Don't flirt around with them. Don't stay in that area with them. Get away from them as much as you can. It's like in Proverbs 7. and verse 6, it's going to talk about the path of the evil woman. It says, For at the window of my house I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding passing through the street near her corner. He shouldn't have been near her corner. He went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and there, behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. That's the clothes that a whore wears, and subtle of heart she is. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. So she's got the attire of an harlot, and she's loud and stubborn. It says, Now she is without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner, just like a hunter, hunting for your soul, hunting for precious life. And look what it says in verse 13. She caught him, she caught him, and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. You see, she's flattering with her lips, with her eyelids. She's got the, on the attire of an harlot. This is your worst enemy. You need to stay away from him. Leave the paths of the evil woman. You got a woman that acts like this around you. You're married. She's married to somebody else. Or you're single. She's married to somebody else. Or she's just trying to mess you up. Trying to cause you to commit fornication. Leave her path. If you if you never get on her path, you can't co commit the action with her. You may mess up and and have the adultery in your heart, but you stay away from her path. You you can't ever commit the action with her. Just like they say, if the best way to become to never become an alcoholic is never take the first drink. If you are never on this woman's path, you'll never commit fornication with her. You may see her at work, but if you never get in her path, it can't go any further. You know, a lot has to fall in line for you to commit fornication or commit adultery. You stay away from her, and it'll never happen. It says, I have, she says, I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Never, if you never get around her, around her, you'll never have to know what her what's on her bed, what her bed looks like. She, but she's trying to tempt him with the flattery of her lips. It says, "Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves." For the goodman is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. Her husband's not there. He's, he's gone. She's trying to tempt him to come. Come home because her husband's not there. You see, watch out for a woman that's always flirting with you even though she's married. You see, if a woman's flirting with you when she's married, why do you think that 
she would have a good relationship with you. If she married you, if she left her husband and married you, she's going to flirt with other men while she's married to you. If she'll cheat with you, she'll cheat on you. And if she cheated with you, can you ever really trust her? Or vice versa, the other way. If you, if a uh, man's flirting with you while he's married, if he leaves his wife for you, he's just going to flirt with other women while he's married to you. So she says, a good man is not at home. He's gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. It says, with her much fair speech, there's those flattering lips, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter. Just like an animal going to get slaughtered. That's the way you are when you let the horse woman hunt you down. As a, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Till a dart strike through his liver... You remember those fiery darts of the wicked that Ephesians 6 talks about? you got to have up a shield to withstand the evil woman. The shield of faith. you got to have the sword of the Spirit. you got to have that whole armor of God. This isn't just a regular enemy here. For a man, this is one of your greatest enemies here. It says, As a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. It says, Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. Leave the path of the evil woman. If you don't even get on her path, then how can you see what her bed looks like? If this guy had never been on her path, he would have never went to her bed that was perfumed with all this stuff. Look what it says. For she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. You see all kinds of strong men slain by a woman. Think about Samson. Woman got the best of him. You think about David. Even though it wasn't a wicked woman he got with necessarily. A woman got the best of him. Solomon. His wives took away his heart. All these strong men, great men. The woman got them. Are you stronger than David? Are you stronger than Samson? Are you wiser than Solomon? You have to leave the path of not just an evil woman, but a woman that's got you in this mindset of where you're tempted to lust and all that. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. That's some strong words. Her house is the way to hell. You need to leave her paths. Get off of the path that she's on. The next thing. Learn to see women as mothers and sisters. 1 Timothy 5, 1 through 2 says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters. Now, notice this, with all purity. So you learn to see women around you, the other women around you, whether it be at work, at church, if you see them as mothers and sisters, then it's going to greatly decrease, you know, your lustful thoughts about them. You know, you see them, at the, even though that's not your mother and sister, that's somebody else's mother, that's somebody else's daughter, that's somebody else's wife. So if you look at them that way, that that's an actual person that somebody cares about, that somebody loves deeply, it's going to cause you to have a, a lot more respect for them. I mean, just imagine your mother. You don't want somebody having thoughts like that about your mother. Imagine your daughter. You don't want somebody having thoughts like that about your daughter. Imagine your wife, even. 
You don't want some guy looking at your wife all the time, having lustful thoughts. And just like in Genesis 20 and verse 3, But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. You think about that verse when you're looking at somebody else's wife. Just let those words play in your ears a little bit. Thou art but a dead man. And you think, well, I'm just thinking about her. Well, you keep thinking and thinking, you'll end up doing what you think about. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You know, a, a wicked lifestyle starts with a long process of bad thinking. Learn to see women as somebody's mother, somebody's sister, somebody's wife, somebody's daughter. You do that and you can look at them with all purity. It'll greatly decrease your sinful thoughts. I'm not saying any of these things is going to completely cure you of all your sexual problems and thoughts and sins that you have. I don't know how far down the hole you've gone, but I think it will greatly decrease it. You see them as souls. See these women as souls that's going to spend eternity in heaven or hell. The next thing. Lasciviousness takes everything you have. So give your everything to God instead. You see, whatever you are addicted to, it's going to take everything you have. So you might as well addict yourself to God. Give everything you've got to God. It says in Ephesians 4.19, Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. You can give yourself over to your sexual desires and all those wicked thoughts that you have who being past feeling you get past feeling after a while when you give yourselves over into lasciviousness that it's it's looseness lustfulness many people give themselves over to their lustful desires of their flesh to the point to where their past feeling they don't even care about the other person's feelings anymore and you get into just horrible gross sin beyond homosexuality beyond pornography more into the they they cross over into the they can't even get their their desire appeased anymore so they get into more extreme stuff like the murder rape stuff and all that type of thing the child pornography stuff. You get to where your past feeling like an animal. You don't have no feeling for the person you're you're going after anymore. The devil wants everything you have. He wants your life. He wants your lifestyle, your minute, your second, your hour, your years, your soul. And if you're going to start chopping away at your sexual sin, then you need to give everything to God. Lasciviousness takes everything you have, so give your everything to God. Imagine your life like an hourglass. Each second, you have a grain of sand going down to the bottom. So say to yourself, you're going to use each grain of sand for the glory of God. Ask yourself before you do anything, does this please God? Does what I'm looking at please God? Does this website please God? Does this thought I have please God? Does this decision I'm making please God? Each grain of sand, does each grain of sand please God as it's going down to the bottom? When you wake up in the morning for work, it's quiet. Give that quiet time to God. On your drive to work, that's more time for your thoughts to run away with you. Give those thoughts to God. In 2 Corinthians 10.5, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So this is part one of Cures for Sexual Sins. 
We'll pick up with part two later.